So in this lecture, I'd like to dive into the weeds a little bit on spatial models and talk about how we would actually construct spatial likelihoods uh, in, in maximum likelihood in, in Bayesian models uh, in order to you know, fit them. So we're going to get in the weeds a little bit and look at some of the code for how we do this. So in the previous conceptual uh, lecture, we talked about how we could break down uh, a spatial model to say the, the prediction response variable z at some location x is a function of the process model. Uh, the process model's predictions at that location given some parameters plus a spatial error component plus a, a non-spatial residual error component, otherwise known as the nugget. Uh, and we can rewrite that general spatial model uh, more specifically by saying uh, the vector of our predicted z's is going to follow a multivariate normal distribution with the mean coming from our process model. And remember that could be as simple as a constant mean or a linear model or a nonlinear model, um, whatever is predicting the means at each of those locations. And then we're going to take these two components, uh, spatial covariance and the, and the residual error, and combine them together into our overall covariance matrix. So we're just literally adding the spatial covariance matrix C plus the residual error tau. Uh, and we're assuming that, that tau uh, follows the assumptions we had previously before we considered spatial models, which is that it's just you know, the same value tau along the diagonal of a uh, uh, covariance matrix. And there's zero covariance. So everywhere in that matrix is zero, except the diagonal, which is just tau, since remember the identity matrix is one everywhere, is one on the diagonal and zero everywhere where else. Okay, so if that's our, our model, how do we implement that in maximum likelihood? So as before, anytime we want to implement something in maximum likelihood, we're going to start by writing down our likelihood function. Uh, and here we're saying our likelihood function, we're going to call it GP MLE, and, and GP just as a reference to this being uh, you know, the, the idea that the, the general form of this is a Gaussian process model and that all Kriging models are just, you know, a special case of a, a two-dimensional Gaussian process model. So we have a, a maximum likelihood function uh, where we pass in some parameters and let's pull up things out of that parameter matrix. So first I'm going to pull out a mean. Uh, if we had a more complex process model, we'd be pulling out the parameters for that process model. Yeah, I'm going to leave it to you to realize that you know we can substitute any uh, any process model in to predict those mu's that have any other number of parameters in them. Uh, we're going to put in our sigma, which is our spatial variance. We're going to put in phi, which is the parameters uh, in our spatial correlation function, and we're going to put in tau, which is our uh, nugget variance. And noting here, we're saying this is optional. So if you have a, a if you've you know looked at the you know the residual data in your uh, the residual error in, in your initial non-spatial model and, a, and the nugget variance appears to be uh, zero or very close to zero, <clears throat> you might drop this term and and just have a spatial variance. Likewise, if you uh, fit a model. Uh, and look at the residuals, and there's no spatial correlation at all, then you wouldn't need the spatial variance or, or spatial correlation. You would just have the mean and the nugget. So you know everything we talked about earlier in the semester is just a special case here. OK, so armed with the parameters, we then need, like we did in the time series model, the first thing we need to do is calculate our covariance matrix. And so that covariance matrix is going to be the variance times our correlation function. And here, we're assuming an exponential correlation function, which is exponential minus psi times d. And remember, d is that larger uh, distance matrix. It is 0 along the diagonal, because the distance between any point in itself is 0, and it takes on other uh, positive values everywhere else. So once we've calculated that, that covariance function, then our overall likelihood is fairly straightforward. We have a multivariate normal likelihood of our data given the predictions from our process model, uh, and then a covariance matrix that is a, combines the spatial covariance plus this 
uh, nugget variants. We're going to want those to be logged. I'm going to sum up those logged likelihoods. And we're going to change the sign on that in order to uh, minimize this function. So arm with that function, we then proceed on as we always did. We'd want to start with initial guess of the parameters, test that that initial guess, guess gives us a valid uh, uh, initial likelihood that you know, you're not taking an initial guess that gives you an NA or a null or an infinity for your log likelihood. Uh, and then we, you know, once we had tested that we had a, a valid function and a valid initial condition, we could just pass this into any optimization uh, routine and it's going to just you know, propose and accept or reject parameters until it finds you know, the best estimate of these parameters. Um, that's all, well, in, in a sense, that's all there is to it. And the red parts here, which highlights that calculation of the covariance matrix and the plugging of that covariance matrix in really highlights that you know, turning a, a non-spatial model into a spatial model doesn't actually require a lot of additional coding. Next, I'm going to extend uh, what we just did in the maximum likelihood uh, to uh, a Bayesian context. Uh, in the Bayesian context, we still have the same likelihood. Our vector of z's follows the multivariate very normal with uh, the predictions from our process model mu, spatial covariance, nugget variance. Uh, but now, since we're Bayesian, we'd have to put priors on mu, or if we had a more general function in there, we'd put priors on whatever the parameters are in that function. We'd have to put a prior on our, our sigma, our spatial variance, a prior on our tau, which is our non-spatial variance, and we'd put a prior on uh, the parameters in our spatial correlation function. To implement this in JAGS, um, again, we'd have the priors on the means and the variances. We'd have to add this prior on uh, phi, which is uh, the parameter in our covariance, the, our correlation function, describing the spatial range of that co covariance. And then we'd have to calculate sigma. As we saw in time series analysis, uh, we have to remember that um, JAGS likes to have everything expressed in terms of precision matrices. So we're going to take our uh, spatial correlation function. Uh, you know, so, so first, this prior and sigma is a precision. So we need to do one over that to get to a variance. We have a variance, one over precision times our spatial correlation function, parameter D, which was pre-computed, our distance matrix. Uh, tau likewise was a precision, so we need to convert that to a variance. So we're just doing the same calculation we did in maximum likelihood, but just remembering that this sigma and tau are precision, so we need to one over them to get them to be variances. So we calculate our covariance matrix, and then we need to do the inverse of that to get back to a, a big sigma precision matrix. Once we have that big sigma precision matrix, we're just saying our whole vector of z's is multivariate normal with our mean from our process model. In this case, it's just a constant mu. And our spatial covariance, so our, our covariance matrix sigma, which again, is a combination of spatial and non-spatial covariances. 